So in this video, we're going to start looking at the Runge Kutta for solving systems of first order ODEs. So first of all, let's get a quick, uh, now first order ODEs or systems of ODEs is a big subject in itself. Um, we're not going to get into those details. I'm going to simply present, uh, we're going to, as far as we're concerned, is one where we have, for instance, an, uh, y dash, y1 dash, for instance, is of uh, the the right hand side is a function of x, um, uh, of course, y1, y2, up to yn. And everything is a function of x. Uh, remember, all the y1s, y1 is a function of x, y2 is a function of x, all, in fact, are functions of x. So x is still, rem x remains the independent variable. Now, this is a single variable problem, remember. It's still, the dependence is on one variable. So, but there are different functions, uh, different differential equations for each of these uh, y's. So therefore then, in a similar way, you'd have y2 is f2, x, y1, up to yn. And similarly, this would go down all the way to yn prime. And that would be the nth function, f1, fn. Now, in theory, that basically accounts for a system of differential equations as far as we're concerned, first order, a system of first order ODEs, which would contain everything. This consists of every type of possible first order uh, ordinary differential equation that you can think of. Now, when we want to apply uh, the Rangakutta to something like this, uh, the way it works is, uh, first of all, our differential equation system would be, so y prime, is equal to the vector function, okay, uh, f of um, basically x and the vector y, in fact. So that's what, uh, this is um, basically the, the vectorial representation, the vector representation of this system would be. Now, if we want to apply uh, the, uh, the Rangakutta to this, I'm going to first um, look at the second order. So I'm going to look at the second order Rangakutta first to start with. Let's do that. So basically, this would be the second order Rangakutta applied to the system of equations. Uh, so it would be well, the usual, but this time it's a vector y, n plus 1, n plus, of course, the half into uh, k, um, the vector k1 plus the vector k2. Um, and each of these k's would have their own components, of course, depending on the number uh, of equations we have. So if you have five equations, we would add, there would be five k1s, five k2s, but they'll all be different, of course. Uh, anyway, or possibly uh, different. Now, the formula for these k's, of course, would work out as follows. So k1, uh, the vector k1 would be basically, all the vector k1s would be h, and then you'd have the the differential equation we're solving, of course, which is the vector f, and it would have x, and it would have the vector h at n, okay? And of course, xn, sorry, forgot that. Okay, that would be k1, and k2, of course, would be the vector k2, and it would be uh, h times the vector f at xn plus h, and it would be the vector y plus the vector k1. Okay, so that would constitute basically the Runge-Kutta second order. Now, if I were to apply that, um, and I'm going to show you that here, if I am to apply that, for instance, to a, uh, let's take a, as an example, not a particular differential equation, but, uh, but uh, say we have, no, so here's our system. So y dash is f x y z and z dash is g x y z. So if you want, uh, basically what we're looking at is a system of two equations here. So now of course um, the these equations need to have uh, initial values uh, or initial uh, conditions rather I should say. And the initial conditions would be for instance y of x zero equals y zero and z of x zero equals uh, z0. Now, I didn't mention it in the, uh, in the equation above, but of course, the, these systems here would all, it's very easy to have 
uh, y. In fact, we can just say rather than this. So, of course, this would mean the, the vector uh, y at x0 is equal to, of course, uh, some set of values, some vector we could call b, for instance, which contains all the um, initial values. So anyway, uh, in this case, that would mean uh, y of x0 is y0. And so, so now how would we apply this recipe, this, uh, what you see here? So what we would do is, now remember, this is, this is a vector equation. So, the, the, and the two vectors, you have to connect the ideas by, by, by keeping in mind that what we're really talking about is this y vector, okay, uh, in terms of, in the following sense, y dash, in fact, is um, f dash, right? So uh, f dash of uh, x and the y vector. Now, what that means basically is, what is your y dash in this case? Your y dash is y and z, y dash and z dash, in fact. Okay, and that's equal to your function f uh, of x, y, z, okay, and g of x, y, z. So that's the vector equivalent. Now, if we apply the Runge-Kutta second order, it would mean we would apply, we would get two equations, of course, y n plus one, I mean the comp in component form, would be y n plus uh, half into k1 plus k2, okay? And now I'm, for the z equation, I'm gonna use the letter L instead of k so that we can keep, uh, keep tabs of the, the two different, because you know, otherwise subscripts of subscripts would be very difficult. So that would be half into, let's say, L1 plus L2, okay? Now, as we move further, the what would happen is now our K1, in this case, is going to be HF of Xn, Yn, Zn, right? And uh, L1 is going to be HG of Xn, Yn, Zn, right? And K2 is going to be HF, Xn plus H, Yn plus K1, and Zn plus L1, remember. Uh, keep in mind, the Z and L go together, and Y and K go together. So, and here, of course, you'll have L2, similarly, is G this time, of course, because that's the... Uh, um, the right hand side of z z prime, so it's g uh, x n plus h y n plus uh, k one z n plus l one, and that basically is the second order uh, runge kutta uh, for um, applied to a system of equations. Uh, we'll next look at the fourth order just as an example, also just so, so you can extend the idea at a more complicated level. So here's the, um, this is how the Runge cut up fourth order in vector form uh, would look for a system of differential equations, of n differential equations, for instance. Now, uh, I'm going to define here the values of the k's. So uh, in vector form, really, it's just going to be k1 is h times the vector f at xn and then the vector y n at, at step n okay and then k2 similarly is going to be um, h f uh, x n plus h over 2 okay and then the y uh, these y vectors will be basically k1 over 2 so it will be plus the k1 vector above okay and multiplied by a half, okay? So that will be K3, okay, is H, F, of course, Xn plus H, and then, uh, H over 2, sorry. And then you'll have Yn, of course, plus half times this time K2, 
the vector k2. And the last, of course, is the fourth k, which is, again, xn plus h this time. Uh, yeah, xn plus h, and then the vector yn plus uh, k3. Okay, so that is now the Rangakata uh, fourth order vector form. Okay, so now if I want to apply that again to the same system that I showed you earlier, let's try to do that. So if we want to do that, let's just keep this here uh, for, our, for the sake of reference. And, and let me remind you, the system we want to solve is uh, that we saw earlier, f, x, y, z, and we have y of x zero equals y zero. And the other equation we have is z dash is equal to g of x, y, z, and it is z of x zero is equal to z zero. So this is our system of uh, two, uh, a system of two differential equations. Now, if we want to apply uh, Rangakata fourth order to this. This is x n y n z n, right? That should be obvious. Second k k two is going to be h, and then f of course of x n plus h over two, and then here y n plus uh, it will be k one. Okay, k one over two, and then it will be z n plus now what well let's have a look at what we are going to set up for the z z n plus one is oh, equal to z n plus one sixth and i'm using l's in this case okay l one l two two l oh plus two l three plus l four so um, we're going to have L's. So that means Z is associated with the L's. So the Z increment is in L's. So it'll be L1 over 2 here. Okay. Now as we move further, as we move further, we'll go into K3. K3 is HF XN plus again H over 2. And then it's got um, another YN, but this time it's going to be K2 over 2. And ZN is going to be L2 over 2 okay then we'll move to k4 and k4 is h f x n plus h y n plus k3 z n plus l3 okay now let's do the same here so l1 is going to be h g this time of x n y n z n then l2 is going to be uh, h g xn plus h over 2, it's the same as before, yn plus, remember, k1 over 2. Don't mix up y and k, z and l, remember that. So here it's going to be zn plus l1 over 2. Essentially, if you see this, the pattern, this it's going to be exactly this. The brackets are going to be all the same. This is only going to be g. This is f and this is g. So that's going to be then L3, and L3 is HG XN plus H over 2. We'll end up with this. So this is the fourth order Rangakutta for a system of first order differential equations. Right, so we're going to stop here. In the next video, we're going to see that um, how we can actually use the systems of equations to solve higher order equations. We'll continue with that next time. Thank you.